Hey, good morning, people. It's, well, what day is it? It's Wednesday. I'm sitting on my bed. It's a glorious day. Today, I thought I would talk about working at a talent agency because it's kind of like folklore here in Los Angeles to, to work at an agency, to work in a mailroom and come in your, you know, it was glamorized by that show Entourage a couple years ago on HBO. And I actually did it. I worked at, a, at an agency. I worked in a mailroom and and I worked my way up, and I thought I would just talk about it for a bit in case anybody's actually interested in that world. Because, cause, you know, it's a it's a very hidden world that's not really... I know there's a lot of movies been made about it, but I actually did it. And there's some, some really finite details, which I will go into, and just what it was like emotionally. So let's pick up the story, I don't know, around 2011, 12. I was super depressed, and... Uh, I had just, I had just driven to a bridge, right, to uh, to kill myself, and of course I get to the bridge and I'm like, this is stupid, this is ridiculous. There's no way I would, I'd, act, I'd actually go through with this. So the next day I made up this fake resume because I had no work experience really, and I made up this fake resume and I went through a temp agency and I started temping at this talent agency called APA. And I was on this desk. His name was Tyler Grasham. If you Google him, he actually got fired for this weird pedophilia shit for this <laughs> Me Too stuff. But let me tell you, that guy was cool to me. He was uh, he was a hard boss. You know, I worked my ass off on that desk from like 8.30 a.m. to like 10 o'clock at night. But, dude, I learned a lot from that guy. Just how the talent because that was a talent desk which means he repped actors which is probably the most demanding desk you can have at a talent agency working as an assistant there because it's like a never-ending flow of appointments meetings interfacing with clients phone calls it just keeps coming so i did that for like a month and i was like thank god this is done i almost walked off that desk like three times but people there convinced me to stay and at the end of it tyler you know, I wrote this recommendation letter for myself and it said, Tharun Shetty's the greatest assistant I've ever had. And he signed it. He was like, yeah, I'll sign this, dude. Are you kidding me? And that was it. So after that, I had an, uh, an interview with United Talent Agency. <clears throat> now, UTA, United Talent Agency, probably one of the top three agencies in Los Angeles. And to get a job there, you have to know someone. You can't just walk in there. You have to know like an agent or a referral, somebody high up. So the fact that I even had an interview with UTA was, was ridiculous. And it was through a temp agency. And I met with this guy named Michael Conway, who was this really legendary guy in LA. HR guy, he's the gatekeeper of UTA. And he selects who comes into the mailroom, who starts a UTA, which is a very hard job to get. Like basically <clears throat> everyone there Hat knows an agent, or they're coming up from an Ivy League school of some sort. And uh, it's just, you know, it's hard to get a job there. So the fact that I was walking in there from a temp agency is beyond incredible. So I go for the interview with Michael Conway, and he's feeling me out. And I feel like it's really not it's really not going as well as I would like to. He's asking me some generic questions, like what I want to do. And I'm like, yeah, I want to be an agent. But I can tell, like, yeah, he's heard this shit before. But I had that letter from Tyler Grasham and it said, and I gave it to Michael and I said, look, Michael, this is the original copy of this letter. It's like, you can have this letter because if you don't hire me, I'm going to go back home to New Hampshire. I'm not going to interview anywhere else. I'm done. I'm done with this business. And I put it on his desk and I started walking out and he goes, Tarun, you're starting uh, August 12th. So there were, there you go. I was in the mailroom at UTA and I went home to New, to New Hampshire my parents got a couple suits, came back, which is just totally ridiculous because I'm like 30-something, like 31 or whatever, 32, and I'm starting in a mailroom, which is a job you get out of college, right? <laughs> I mean, I would have been so embarrassed to talk about this years ago, but who cares at this point, right? So I walk in there uh, first day. It's all these college kids, right? They're all like, they're all like super young, like out of college and out of these Ivy League schools, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, all that shit. And, and it was, it was intimidating. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. I felt like I was in a dream, right? Like I was like, this is insane. And basically your job is to give out mail 
to the rest of the agents. You get every agent has an assistant, a secretary, pretty much, and your job is to give mail to the assistants. And then if an assistant calls in sick, then you cover that desk and you get assigned a desk from the uh, the mailroom head, wherever that is. So every day you might work in film, you, you might work in TV, you might work in digital, whatever. So you kind of learn different aspects of the business. And those jobs are tough. I don't know how kids do it out of college because I was having a tough time doing it. You know, as an older guy, I was like, man, this is insane. Like, the volume of phone calls that come in, you really, it's almost like being strapped into a, a cockpit of a, of a, of a jet because you got to be totally focused. And I would see kids just flame out. Like they would go on a desk and, you know, they'd get yelled at by the agent or whatever and they couldn't keep up and then they would just quit the next day or they wouldn't show up. Like they really, to, to make it through as an assistant, especially if you have like a tough boss. Dude, there was this guy there who's, I think he's a board member like david kramer <laughs> I, he still works he's like he's like a big big agent dude we would hear this guy yell at his, yell at his assistant from down the hall i'm like holy shit you know this is insane and i think he was yelling because the guy wasn't reading the phone sheet correctly which is how you like roll calls rolling calls is basically you know hey dude give me this guy then you call that guy and you give me this guy and you call this guy so you got to be on it and you got to be fast and you got to be accurate. You can't be misdialing things. You got to be professional on the phone. And I know this sounds easy, but it's not. It's really not an easy thing. And you have to be, you know, there's a reason why the kids who make it through there are somewhat intelligent because, because uh, you know, it takes a lot to, to do that day in, day out. So anyways, I'm doing the mailroom thing. And in between, sometimes you get these random jobs, which was the coolest because... I got assigned to drive Daniel Espinosa, who was at the time an A-list director. Uh, he directed the movie Safe House with Ryan Reynolds. And I drove him around to all of his appointments and meetings. We got really close. Awesome guy. Awesome dude, Daniel Espinosa. I drove uh, Alicia Vikander. Vikander, am I saying that right? She's like a huge movie star now. So I took her to all her auditions. She would just play house music. And she was like this 19-year-old girl, 20 years old. So you know, it was kind of cool hanging out with these you know, celebrities from <laughs> the Swedish celebrities, you know. Also, the reason why they do that is because, you know, these are their clients. You, you can't just hire, like, an outside courier to drive them around because, you know, these are their money makers. And it's also a good way for assistants to, like, learn the business. You know, I think I learned a lot walking onto those sets and just seeing, talking to Daniel for, like, you know, I had full access to an A-list director eight hours a day. You know, I would just shoot the shit with this guy eight hours a day, like, you cannot you you can't buy that wherever you go. Like that's a that's a privileged situation. Anyways, so as you're interviewing, I, I, when you're in the mail room, your, your whole objective is to get a desk. Your whole objective is to get to become an assistant somewhere. And you interview on these different desks around the agency. And uh, you know, I think I interviewed for about eleven desks in six months in the mail room. And that was hard because I thought, hey, look, I'm a smart guy. I know the business. I've been in the business. I, I can. I, I'm. I'm a, I'm a good assistant. I know how to do this job well. I know how to roll calls. All that bullshit. I could not get a, a desk. I think part of it was because I was older. And when you hire an assistant, you kind of want someone you can kind of ream, <laughs> kind of. You know, you you want someone you can mentor as well. And you know, it's weird. Like when you're almost as old as the agents, right? Uh, that you're interviewing for. Uh, people thought I was younger because I look younger. But it was just like this weird thing where I couldn't land a desk. And I went there to go work in film, and I couldn't even get a film desk. I remember I interviewed for this girl, and they Googled me, and they found all this stand-up comedy shit. And she was like, yeah, you know what? I want someone who's totally focused. Because I was still performing stand-up comedy at nights. I didn't tell anybody that at the agency. But like I was getting spots at the comedy store, which is like one of the toughest clubs to perform at. You know, So I was it's weird. I was working a desk at UTA, and then I go perform at the comedy store at night. It was absolutely surreal. And then the, the hardest part for me was seeing my friends who were repped at UTA come in and be like, well, dude, what are you doing here? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. And I had no answer. I would just, you know, roll with it and just be like, well, this is my life. It's unique. I'm just showing up every single moment. And at least I'm not dead. <laughs> at, least I'm not, I don't, at least I'm not over some bridge somewhere. And I'm alive and I'm making, you know, some money every week. So 
thank God this guy came in. He was an agent from Willie Morris Endeavor, and uh, he didn't have an assistant. His name was Chris Newman. He was a senior non-scripted TV packaging agent, which was a reality TV agent. And uh, he interviewed me. He uh, he called up Tyler from APA, where I worked and temped. Tyler gave me a glowing recommendation, and I was off and running. And I was uh, Chris's assistant for about a year, and this guy was no doubt probably the best boss I've ever had. I mean, he was tough, but he was a great mentor, and I learned a shit ton from this dude. I mean, looking back in retrospect, I could not wait to get off his desk and just you know get out of that system because you know I'm a creative person, and I think it just killed me to not be able to express myself because I had no time. I fully committed myself to being an assistant. You have to. That's the only way you can succeed in that job. You cannot do it half-assed because you will get fired. So if you come to LA and you want to be an assistant, get ready because that's going to be your life. You cannot do anything else. I'm telling you straight up. If, you do, if you're, if you're you know, half-assing it, they're going to they're gonna smell it on you and fire your ass. That's just what it is. So I committed myself. Thank God there's a girl there named Natasha who was also an agent, like a junior agent, and she just talked me. <laughs> she talked me off a cliff every single day and I was like, I cannot do this. Like, you know, Chris is killing me. And she would just be like, yeah, it's going to be good. You're, you're fine. They like you. You're good. So I ended up leaving there after a year. I was, uh, you know, for Chris, I, I, I pretty much did all that stuff. I rolled calls. I sent meetings, you know, helped get his business going. And this guy worked his ass off. Let me tell you. You know what? In fact, people always complain about agents, how they fleece money from their clients. See, it's hard for me to say that because... Because people do not understand the agent's perspective. The way the businesses run, agents have to make a certain amount of money to put food on their table for their kids, right? It's not, it's not really about, you know, we're going to fleece clients. They're trying to make as much money as possible so they can keep their jobs, which is why they can only service the 1%, right? The people who are working because these are the guys that make money. Nobody has time to develop some fucking bullshit, you know, <laughs> actor from Omaha, Right? You got to find people who are working, man. I mean, look, I don't have a lit agent now, and I know a shit ton of people who are lit agents. They can't help me because I don't have any. I don't have any spark behind me. That's just what it is. I get it. I get it. I'm not complaining about it. And guess what? It's my job to get that spark and to get good and to to get as uh you know to get as much gas under me as possible so they can light that fire and take me to another level. So when I hear people complain about agents, I feel like, look, that's your shit, dude. Get over yourself. Um, that job, I lasted a year. Um, as soon as my year was up, I pieced out. I didn't even have another job lined up. I just made up some bullshit, which was, which was sad because actually I think, I think that was a huge regret for me because cause I think UTA did love me. I really think they supported me. In fact, they tried to get me to stay and I was like, no, I'm out. I'm done. Cause the creative spirit, man, you cannot contain that. It is like a wild horse. And I know creative people who are listening, understand that you just can't suppress that. No matter how much money you get thrown, you, you have to do it. There's no way around it. And I went from UTA to working at this place called primary wave was like this, this music management company which was hell. My boss ended up getting fired for like double dipping and I was caught in this whole maelstrom of, you know, I don't know what happened there. It was just a bad situation. Um, and then I worked for, as a manager at some uh, digital management company and I worked with like Tyrese Gibson and a bunch of other celebrities. And, you know, I didn't have a fourth of the support or like contacts at any of these agencies, but I had the work ethic that, uh, my boss Chris taught me a UTA and that whole mailroom system. So, so I feel like if you do come to Hollywood, you know it's not easy, but it's worth checking into. And uh, you don't need to have those contacts, right? You can. I did it. I I, I went through a temp agency, but I did it for, by just working my ass off and just taking risk and chances, which is how I've pretty much done my entire career. And I think sometimes you know. Should I have even taken that job? Because I mentioned before in this podcast that uh, right before I got that job, I got called by a comedy agent who wanted to rep me. And that was a dream of mine to be like a comedy actor. And I said no to the agent because I was going to go work at the agency in the mailroom. But 
at that moment in time, it felt like the right thing to do. And and I seriously, you know, if I if, if I just auditioned from, you know, and did acting shit from the time I graduated school till now, man, what a bland existence that is. To go from audition to audition, you know, shoot stuff, write stuff, put it out there. Another audition, go to a set, trailer, blah, blah, blah. Man, <laughs> great. That's fun. But that's boring, dude. Look. Working on the business side, I think life experience is an important thing in anything you do. And to have that, you know, four or five years of life experience working on the business side of entertainment, like that was my graduate school. That was my MBA in entertainment. And I learned so much and I'm so appreciative of uh, everybody who I was an assistant to and even the bad guys who I was an assistant to. Like I learned a shit ton and, and it's something really to explore if you want to, you know, come to Hollywood. So, hope that helps. I mean, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure it out like everybody else. Have a great day.